You built a, a, a VR or a, a virtual object uh, grabber. grabber. So you have four servos, one for each finger, mm -hmm. and big levers that, are, that can pull on your fingers. Yeah. And then you're going, and, and the object that you're reaching in for is a, a light source. And as you, move, as you reach into the dark box here, then mm -hmm. as you get closer to the light source, the photosensors say that you are yep. touching this. And right. therefore, you should have force on your fingers. So it's kind of like there's some sort of spherical surface that you're exactly. going to be touching. Well, we wanted to make it as spherical as possible because we knew these um, transistors were, or phototransistors were very directional. Uh -huh. So when we kind of countered that was we first um, sanded these parts so that we could refract all the lights not into a very single way but into so we can scatter it around. Okay so so these are quite broad broad photosensors yes. now after you ground them down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And also the, we chose these uh, ultra bright one wet LEDs so that they're um, I think they gave like 160 degrees of um, field of view. So you should be able to run your hand around the hemisphere, ideally. Ideally. <laughs> okay. So put your hand in there. Let's see this thing operate. Actually, before we, um, okay. before I put my hands in there, I do kind of want to give you a very brief overview of what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Um, and then we'll do that by using uh, fluorescent. Yeah, the fluorescent light bulb. So Kevin, if you will. So I guess this is like a very general um, overview of. We have light, and then we'll have force. Okay, so so, go ahead. <coughs> yeah. Oh, I see. So, all right. So now move the light away from there. I see. Okay, now move it back. Okay. So I can be like, put it down, and then if you pull it up, I can be like, no, the light, and then <laughs> it will pull back by itself as well. Gotcha. Okay, so I can certainly see all the servos operating there. Mm -hmm. This looks like a lot of 3D printing in here, yes, too. Yes, we, we had it all of it, um, and we 3D printed it all of it in the <laughs> rapid prototyping lab. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now can you reach in? Yep. Is it now, now the time? So the main reason we wanted to stay away from fluorescent was first because I didn't want to put my hand on a very hot thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and also because we want to have a way to vary the amount of light. Uh -huh. um, so we thought, you know, why not just use one watt ultra um, sure. really bright LEDs. Mm -hmm. So the only downside of using these LEDs is that they're not as strong as the fluorescent bulbs that uh -huh. we just showed, so that we can't really get a full effect on all four at the same time. Okay. So here what I'll probably do is I'll probably emulate like a kind of like a petting or like a stroking. Okay, so you so, should be all right. So you should see the 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 you see a ripple across yeah, your fingers. Exactly. Okay, let's see this. So let's say like I'm trying to like pet like a like a virtual dog. Then it would be Wow. And the other way. Yep. One more time. The only downside um, of these uh, servos is that they're a little too, too closely close. located. So um, if you yes. want to talk about that, so oh, so there's a little bit of interaction between exactly. the levers. So when you when you um, when we watched the petting, you heard a little clicking. Mm -hmm. The clicking was because these two levers were hitting each other. Um, so I guess when we made the mount, we uh, mounted the servos a little too close to each other. We tried shaving it down a bit, but that didn't help that much. And if we shaved it down a little more, then it wouldn't be strong off enough. Right exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay, but that's a that's that that's for the you know rev two you you exactly. fix that yeah. right. So, so go do it again. Let me let's let's reach in there and so you you come close to the light and and you can feel quite a lot of force on your finger presumably. Right. And how, how strong are these servos relative to your finger? They're not as strong as your finger, though. They won't they? break your finger. I tried that. <laughs> that was the first thing I had to make yeah. sure. So, uh, so you, you, right, I would say that uh, they, can, they can put enough force on you that, that you feel it for sure, exactly. but you probably don't. Mm -hmm. It's not going to bend your finger backwards. Right. Okay. And just because the reason we chose servos as opposed to um, brush motors or brushless was that <clears throat> um, it would lock in place so that you would have to be um, constantly providing with so that it would basically lock and then you can have a fixated position of the size. Mm -hmm. So how would you, be, you, you would program then different shape objects here by, by changing the light distribution? Mm -hmm. right. So that's another demonstration I want to kind of lead you into next. So if you look at the LCD right now, uh, we have it demonstrating that the virtual size of the object is going to be six centimeters. Okay. And, and if I turn this up? Well, oh, we can only vary it 
uh, turn uh, it down, down from there because the LEDs only have um, mm -hmm. they're, they're at their maximum right. intensity right now. So now they're going down to five centimeters. Four now four centimeters. centimeters. Okay. And then basically you'll see a dimming of these lights. All right. So so I'm dimming the lights here as I as I. Oh yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. All and right. then we um, program this so that once you get to a certain point, I think once I think you get to maybe two centimeters, I believe. Yeah. Two uh, it was. The intensity was so small that the phototransistor is outside its well-read zone. Mm -hmm. So we just said, in that case, just ignore it as like a zero case. Okay. Um, so actually, if you can bring it back to six centimeters, I want to show you kind of the accuracy or I guess the precision of this virtual grabber. Okay, so six centimeters is our intended, I guess, object size. Wait, I have so, it at nine now. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Back, I guess go, go back. back to let's go back to six. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And basically, we just have like a, a you got a little ruler slider, right? Yeah. And then I'll put the six centimeter mark right in the reference point of the light source. And basically, I'm gonna just put one finger um, starting at the zero centimeter mark. Okay. And if this is very accurate, then ideally we should have the um, exoskeleton kind of kick in right then. Yeah. Okay. And any kind of centimeter beyond that is just error tolerance. So let's see how quickly this can act up. So I think I'm That's at pretty good. one centimeter around, mm -hmm. and if I go outside, then it'll just relax. Okay, so do that again now. So you're, I'm trying to get the, the right angle here. So you're, yeah, as you touch it, it, it pulls back. Right. Okay, then, so you, it, so it's pretty binary. So it's, right. yep. it's, it act, it's acting like a hard surface. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. How heavy is it? Uh, the servos themselves are pretty heavy. But there's a trade-off between the size of the servos and the, like the amount of pull it had. But since you put them back on your arm, it's right. less less <laughs> torque than if you had them out on your fingertips. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I've been uh, keeping rigorous time of uh, how long I've been put this on. So right now, we can see the time. This is almost my fifth hour of putting this on. And my fingers and my shoulder are very cold because of the poor circulation. Because and of the pressure on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. it's, um, we bought a wrist um, bracelet on top of a glove, on Turn, top of a ruler. Rotate it over here so I can see the bottom side. I see. So you have a fairly heavy glove on there to hold everything in, in position. Well, everything's stuck together by Velcro. So the purpose of the Velcro is so that it's adjustable and mobile. So basically any user could use it of any hand size, essentially, mm -hmm. and it's, we can take it apart and put it on pretty quickly. That is pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't know, did you talk about, uh, I guess, where we want to take it from here or the application usage um, in terms of virtual reality? Well, for future use, we were thinking we could have some sort of Hall effect sensors or some <coughs> LEDs, um, so we could sort of um, emulate the, like, playing a piano. So oh. we have... So you have force feedback. Um, exactly. Piano. So if you didn't have a piano there, but you wanted to play piano, then you could have the sensation of feeling of playing piano. Mm -hmm. That was the first feeling that I got when I first tried this on, and it had the, uh, I guess these pads kind of pulling back on my finger. Mm -hmm. I told Kevin, "Hey, this feels exactly like playing a piano when I was a young kid." Uh -huh. So if there is a way of playing like a virtual um, piano, so I know we worked on digital synthesis a little bit in lab mm -hmm. two. So maybe in the future, if you kind of want to um, integrate this with digital synthesis and actually make it into like a virtual piano playing, and we thought that was another project. robotic robotics with pianos. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you.